Because remember, differentiated labor forces is what makes manufacturing work. China's a huge place. It's got a lot of that internally, and then it has access immediately to Taiwan, Japan, Korea, and Southeast Asia. That's what's breaking down that whole ecosystem. Uh, we can't rebuild all of that. I mean, just just to serve electronics needs for North America probably would require a workforce of 4 million people in manufacturing. We're already in labor shortage. And the Mexicans are kind of tapped out already. So there is going to be a huge amount of pressure. Americans do well at the really high-end manufacturing and the very low end because we're energy rich. It's the part in the middle that we're really reliant on the Mexicans to save us for. Like I said, this is perspective. We're dealing with an environment that we've never been in before. Uh, the way I would like to be wrong is that the Americans would actually do what George Herbert Walker Bush wanted to do back in 1991 and have a conversation with ourselves about what sort of world we wanted to live in and how to get there. We weren't interested then. I would argue that we're really not interested now. Uh, so the, the risk here, from my point of view, is that globalization does manage to persist because of some lingering American commitment. I'm not seeing that. I'm certainly not seeing that with the Ukraine war. Yes, we're seeing NATO having a, a new lease on life, but the whole guns for butter deal that we made during the Cold War, none of the economic stuff is on the agenda. All the sanctions that the Trump administration enacted are still there with one exception, the, the Airbus case. Uh, I don't see it's very likely. And then on the demographic front, that's just math. If you want more 30-year-olds, 30 years, 30 year olds, you had to start 31 years ago. Uh, that would probably lead to the end of the Chinese system as an industrialized economy in less than a year. Um, Why? That's fascinating. It's an open question of whether or not the Chinese could pull it off. Uh, and with the Ukraine war, we finally got some good signposts of what it might look like. The Chinese have always assumed that the war would be a walkover, that no one else will get involved, and that China is such a big place that everyone will just suck it up and move on. Well, that clearly hasn't happened with Ukraine. And the United States and the West have a much tighter relationship with Taiwan than they do with Ukraine. Ukraine was only preparing for this war for eight years. Taiwan has been preparing for 60. Uh, Ukraine, can, you can walk to Ukraine from Russia. It's a bit of a swim to get to Taiwan. Uh, the sanctions that are in place against Russia would absolutely devastate China because, well, Russia has a lot of faults. It's a major exporter of food and energy. China imports those things. 75% of their oil is imported from a different continent. Uh, and 75% of their oil is imported. And then I think it's really the boycotts that have really scared the Chinese the most. The idea that individual citizens might have any say on policy, they had they did not see that coming. They have no way to process that in a one-man state. Because it's so taken, different to the setup that they have. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So every assumption that they've based the last 40 years of military planning on is proven to be wrong. And then, of course, there's the question of whether they could actually do it. If they did a slow-motion mobilization like the Russians did, it took three months, the Taiwanese would see that. They'd build a few nukes. And so the cost of capturing Taiwan would be losing Shanghai and Beijing. That doesn't seem like a good plan. So the only battle plan that I've seen that might work is if they just text every member of the army and say, go to a port, get on a fishing boat and sail. You'd lose a million people in the crossing just to get to the beaches. So there, there's nothing about this that works. And if they did pull it off, even if they do capture Taiwan, they are now cut off from global manufacturing, global investment, global energy, and global food. Trucks stop running within a couple of months, the lights go out in less than six, and that is all she wrote. Remember, agriculture is an industrial sector, so you're talking about mass famine in under a year. Dude, that is wild. Now, normally I'd say the Chinese aren't stupid, they wouldn't do this, but it's a one-man show now, and nobody wants to bring Xi any information because they don't know how he'll react. He's shot the messenger literally so many times mm. that everything is a surprise to him. Every time, okay. But even a mere mistake just cascades through the system and it's a full cult of personality so you know we have got basically people who are zealously trying to do what they think you want them to do and that's one of the more innings once you seeing tons of people in hazmat gear disinfecting airport runways because they think that's what you have to do for covid such that people talk about the american now in a factory zone 
That's nothing compared to what's going on in the Chinese system. While the next five years are going to be up, we basically in the West need to at least double the size of our industrial plan. Let me correct that. In the West, minus Germany. Germany is its own special case. Everyone else has largely hallowed out their manufacturing as part of globalization. We focus on the really high end stuff and the design. But a lot of the middle and the lower stuff is now done in other countries. That's got to sense. If you are part of a network where you can access low skill level like the Americans are with the Mexicans, great if you are not. You either need to attach yourself to another system or find some way to go without now. If you are in that kind of friends and family network of the Americans, energy is covered. Food is covered. Investment will be tight but available. And there's a degree of security that you won't have in the rest of the world. So the biggest problem is going to be building out that industrial plant. That means we should expect inflation in the US maybe 9 to 15 for the next 5 years or 6 years. Because that's what it's going to take to get through this. And if we do succeed at building that industrial plant over that time frame, then that inflation rate will come down. And we'll have supply chains that are shorter, simpler, cheaper, and closer to end consumer. So better all around. So if we are part of that network and you can get over that home, it looks pretty good. If you decide to go your own way, things are going to get a lot tougher. Unless you are one of those regional powers who actually has the geography and demography to make it work. France. After the financial collapse of say, the euro might not notice the rest of the world going to hell. Their manufacturing is already in place. Their energy system is fine. They have got oil just across the Mediterranean. They are going to have subsidiary economy in Spain and Italy. It's a fairly good setup. The Americans will always complain more than what the problem is old. And the fact that we are going through our political transition at the same time we are doing this is. You know, awkward to say the least. We are going to blame a lot of things on a lot of things that have no direct connection. That's very American. If we are talking about Britain, that's up to you guys, like you know. If you can figure this out and figure out a relationship with the United States or the France before the break, that would be your best bet. Now is the time to cut a deal. We have just had a sense in government. The Ukraine was hot and heavy if we were going to have a leader take the country in a more sustainable direction. Okay, thank you for watching Geopolitics Research.